This so-called revolution in Libya will lead to black people swinging from trees being lynched, will lead to the country becoming five, six, ten emirates, the better for the oil companies to steal their wealth. Libya will break into several countries and they'll start massacring each other on a tribal and ethnic basis. And we were right. It's not that we wanted to be right. It's that we knew that we were right. And those poor fools who follow the BBC are shown a propaganda film and well up as a result and support an imperialist war in consequence were fooled again just as they were fooled in the march to the war with Iraq into the fake conclusion that because a country is led by a brute, a small tyrant, that the answer is to bring in the big tyrants to rule in his stead. This is a fundamental flaw of Western foreign policy in the region and more and more people know it. All of us were involved, most of you, if not all of you, were involved in defending the Palestinian people against the murderous siege raised against them to starve their children to death, to punish them for having voted the wrong way in then the only democratic election ever held in any Arab country mm. at any time. They voted for a party that Britain, America and Israel don't like, so they put on a siege killed their children by hunger and poverty, and then, when that didn't succeed, launched a murderous war against them, locking the gates uh, uh, on all sides in Egypt and in Israel, the better to rain down bombs upon a defenseless people. And insofar as that small defenseless people had any small arms, they got it from and through Syria and through Iran. None of these other friends of Syria, and here I must parenthesize, I have a very, very good memory. I never forget anything. Sometimes it's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> this started life as friends of democratic Syria. It's very important to remember that. Mrs. Clinton announced it as friends of democratic Syria until they realized the absolute absurdity, even on Fox News, of Saudi Arabia and Qatar being the main funders of the Friends of Democratic Syria. I mean, only a lunatic could accept that Saudi Arabia, in which no democracy of any kind is permitted, and anyone asking for it will either be killed or hanged upside down and tortured in the dungeons for it, could conceivably be interested in democracy in Syria. Hence, it metamorphosed into friends of Syria. And as uh, everyone here has already adumbrated, there is no sense in which these people are truly, genuinely friends of Syria. The Syrian regime is as has been characterized here. But it's not being subverted, invaded, and being brought down, if possible, because it's undemocratic? Mm. How could that be? Mm. When our best friends in the region are the absolute antithesis of democracy. It's not because human rights in Syria are bad, because human rights in all these dictatorships are bad, and in some of them, even worse than in Syria. Because there's one family rule in <laughs> Syria, how could it be? What's the name of the uh, rulers of Saudi Arabia? They've even given their name to the country itself. The Prime Minister of Bahrain has been the Prime Minister since 1960, before the Beatles. And the Beatles, the Beatles have been gone 40 years. He's been the Prime Minister from 1960 to 2012. And how did he get that job? Because he's a member of the one family rule dictatorship in, in Bahrain. I drew attention, I recall, to an early day motion which I was able to verbally put to Douglas Hart during the 1991 war against 
Iraq, to the fact that all 27 cabinet members in Kuwait all had the same name, Al-Sabah, <laughs> pointing out that Kuwait is a family business, though more of the Corleone variety than the Sainsbury <laughs> family business. The, the idea that Syria should be attacked, invaded, subject to humanitarian intervention because it has one family rule for 40 years, that can't be the reason either, can it? It can't be for any of these reasons, and it isn't. Here's the reason, and I repeat what Dr. Sami said. The reason is not for any of the bad things about Syria, of which there are many, but because Syria refuses to sign a surrender peace deal with Israel as the other frontline states have done. Because Syria refuses to cut its links with the Palestinian resistance and expel them, although they've all moved to Doha, <laughs> I see in the some last few them, weeks, some of, them, some, some of them, all roads lead to Doha, even, though, <laughs> even the World Cup. Well, perhaps Doha, yeah. better not go into how that came about. <laughs> but perhaps it was for the same reasons. Yeah. The Syrians refuse to cut their relationship with the Palestinian revolution and its resistance. They refuse to cut their relations with the Lebanese national resistance, the only Arab army which ever gave Israel a beating on the battlefield. And by the way, that also was one of the reasons I won in Bradford, because everybody's watched my Sky News interview at the height of the uh, Lebanese uh, war. It's a no-brainer. Syria is being targeted because it refuses to be a base for imperialism in the region, because it refuses to agree that Iran is the head of a snake that needs to be cut off and itself invaded and subverted. That's why Mrs. Clinton and William Hague hate Syria, or rather its regime. Now, Jeremy Paxman put to me last night, again, as if it were some kind of accusation that I had described Syria as the last castle of Arab dignity. The reason why this plot has failed, and believe me, it has failed, is because the Syrian people, not their regime, in fact, the regime for 40 years has been play-acting and betraying. The Syrian people are the last castle of Arab dignity. They are the last repository of Arab nationalism in the region and rejection of Zionist occupation and imperialist intrigue. And that's why I hope that the Syrian people can find their way to a peaceful and negotiated solution to this conflict. Assad must go. This is the end of the era of dictatorship in Syria. We cannot have one family, one party, one regime ruling forever in any Arab country and we will not support it, but we will not support the bigger tyrants mm. invading and intervening to bring down the small ones because we believe, as real friends of Syria, that that will lead to even more disaster than these dictatorships have caused. I just make to, want to make one or two uh, last points, uh, if I may. I, the Muslim Brotherhood is not monolithic. It's not monolithic either in the world or even in any one country. And millions, hundreds actually of millions of people are sympathetic to the political uh, perspectives of the Muslim Brotherhood. And what I'm about to say, just like Dr. Sami, is not in any way an attack on them. But I have to ask this Muslim Brotherhood leadership. There are many Arab dictators why have you announced a jihad against the one Arab dictatorship that doesn't have an Israeli embassy, yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't have the Mos Mossad running around the capital city, hasn't signed a surrender peace with Israel, does support the liberation of the Palestinian people with guns and money, does support the Lebanese national resistance? Why have you chosen that dictatorship mm. for your jihad? Aren't there any dictatorships closer to hand? Mm that are more close to the line of treason that you might have a jihad against. And I said this to one of the leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan. He said, we can't have a jihad in Jordan because it will bring about civil war. So you want a civil war in Syria, 
but you're not prepared to rise up against your own tyrant because you say the result will be civil war. There's no reason for a revolution to bring about civil war. These dictatorships, rotten as they are, if a united people rise up against them, can defeat them. But if your revolution is pregnant with sectarianism and hatred of minorities, as I believe certain sectors of this Syrian revolution are, how can you expect to unite the people? If the Christians are frightened of you, if the Shiites are frightened of you, if the Alawain are frightened of you, if the Kurds are frightened of you, if the Yazidis women. are frightened of you, if the women are frightened of you, how can you unite the people in a revolution? So correct your line, correct your rhetoric, correct your tactics, and maybe your revolution will be successful. I hope, very much hope, that the Kofi Annan plan of a negotiated transition to democracy in Syria can work. I believe that it can work. I believe that it will work. I believe that we will have democratic elections in Syria this year. But if I'm wrong, anybody who launches a united, progressive, democratic struggle against the Syrian regime will have my support. But they will never have my support for my country bombing their country like we bombed Iraq, Libya and elsewhere. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you.